हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू आर के एकेडमी माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स एज वी आर डिस्कसिंग द बायोलॉजी टॉपिक्स इन एवरी डे इन द एवरी सेशन ऑलवेज वी आर ऑलवेज कीपिंग द पर्टिकुलर वीडियोस ऑन द यूट्यूब आल्सो सो माय डियर एस फ्रेंड्स प्लीज डाउनलोड आर के अकाडमी ऑनलाइन ऐप एज वेल एज प्लीज सब्सक्राइब एंड गेट मोर वीडियोज फ्रॉम द आर के अकाडमी ऐप Uh, yes my dear students in the last session we had discussed about the digestive system as well as respiratory system and also circulatory system and recently we had released the particular uh, circulatory video also now i am going to discuss about the excretory system yes yes what is excretory system excretory system means here this particular system deals with the excretion or elimination of the material from the body elimination or excretion the particular materials from our body yes what does it deals with yes it deals with the excretion means the elimination of the waste materials from our body such as nitrogenous waste such as nitrogenous waste and some other substance like ammonia and some other chemicals are eliminated from our body yes it is called as excretion the elimination of the waste material from our body is called as excretion and here some other excretory organs are there in our body and this is what skin it is also the best example for the excretory organ and also lungs are also excretory organs because these eliminates uh, eliminates the carbon dioxide from our body and also uh, and also water in the form of a little a little amount of vapor and come to this come to the skin a uh, skin also eliminates the waste material from our body in the form of in the form of sweat as it contains the salt content and also liver also eliminates the waste material from our body such as uh, such as bile verdin and bile rubin these are also waste materials and rectum and this is the rectum rectum also eliminates the waste materials in the form of solids in the form of solids and what is that kidney kidney also eliminates the waste materials and also it purifies the blood it purifies the blood and water and whatever the waste materials are there in the kidney they are they get eliminated by the eliminated in the form of urine and some other chemical components and these are all these organs eliminates the waste materials in the form of inorganic and organic substances in the form of some other some other manner and some organs if you take the liver it secretes or liver it uh, eliminates the waste materials in the form of bile and skin whereas it eliminates in the form of sweat and lungs whereas uh, if you take the lungs it uh, eliminates the waste materials in the form of carbon dioxide and kidney and kidney also eliminates the waste materials in the form of urine you all know that and you know what some renal excretion and non renal excretion these are the two terms which means renal excretion means those excretory materials which is done with the help of kidneys this is called as renal excretion and what is non renal excretion non renal excretion means uh, in those organisms which do not have the kidneys but they perform the elimination elimination procedure with some other organs let we let we discuss let me discuss about the eliminatory elimination of the waste materials as well as the excretory organs in the different different organisms yes come to the next one here types of excretion yes what is types of excretion you know what those organisms which secretes ammonia those organisms which secretes ammonia and those organisms which secretes urea as uh, those organisms which eliminates ammonia not secretes those organisms which eliminates ammonia as the chief component in their urine is called as ammonotelic animals what is that ammonotelic animals and those organisms which secretes uh, those organisms which eliminates the waste materials in the form of uric acid is called as uricotelic uricotelic animals and you know and those organisms which eliminates the waste materials or the chief components in the urine is a uh, waste product is urea such that animals are called as ureotelic animals what is that ureotenic animals this is what the type of excretion and come to the next one see here excretory organs and what were the excretory organs that are involved in the excretion you know what in some organisms nephridia metanephridia flame cells glial cells coxal glands glean glands and some other developed in the developed organisms you can see the kidneys are also the major organs which are helpful for the 
excretion of the excreting the waste material from our body yes what were the organs that are involved in the excretion from the lower organisms to the higher organisms so and what is lower organisms you know what porifera seal enterata platyhelminthes nematyhelminthes arthropoda annelida and mollusca and final one is echinoderma these are all those organisms are the lower organisms which do not possess any vertebral column which do not possess any vertebral column that's it. that is called as lower organisms whereas come to the higher organisms you know what pisces amphibians pisces amphibians reptiles and aves and mammals these are also the organisms which are having the vertebral column and those organisms which are having the vertebral column is called as vertebrates and these are also called as the higher organisms or higher animals or developed animals yes we come to the next one and name of the phyla and excretory organ is given here see have a look on here in the protozoa in the protozoa the waste materials whatever the waste materials are there in the protozoa they can excreted by simple diffusion diffusion means higher pressure to the lower pressure this is called as simple diffusion and come to the porifera and cilentrata in the porifera and cilentrata the excretion is done with the help of water bath by cells whatever the cells are there in the particular organisms they get eliminates the waste material from the body and come to the platyhelminthes and nematoda in the platyhelminthes nematoda is also called as nematohelminthes what is that nematohelminthes and in these organisms flame cells are the chief cells which excretes and which eliminates the waste material from their body and in the annelida in the annelida nephridia is uh, excretory organs in the arthropoda you can have all those diagrams i will represent all those diagrams for this particular phyla in the next uh, slide and here in the arthropoda green glands and malfusion tubules uh, plays an important role in the excretion or uh, eliminating the waste material from the body and in the case of mollusca you can see metanephridia what is that you can see the metanephridia in the echinodermata let's have an example for the echinodermata the best example for the echinodermata is the starfish what is that starfish in the starfish you can observe the metanephridia and in the reptiles birds mammals in the reptiles birds and the mammals in the reptiles birds and mammals you can see the kidneys uh, plays an important role in the elimination of the waste material from the body and come to the next one you can see the you can observe all those slides and this is what the protozoa what is that protozoa this is an example of protozoa and what is this what is this slide indicates it is the amoeba what is that it's an amoeba this amoeba eliminates the waste material from the body through simple diffusion what is that through simple diffusion and come to the next one and in the porifera and cilentrata the excretion done with the help of water bath by cells what is that by cells in the porifera you can see what is porifera porifera means those organism which possess the pores and their bodies is called as porifera fine and those porifera these are all belongs to the porifera and cilentrata porifera and cilentrata this eliminates their these eliminates their waste materials by the cells of the body that is called water bath what is that water bath and come to the next slide and this is annelida or annelida excretes their waste materials with the help of uh, eliminates the air waste material with the help of nephridia these are all the nephridia this particular nephridia eliminates the waste material from the body uh, just have a look on the nephridia and this is what the section cutting of of an earthworm in the earthworm you can see the you can see the nephridia and where does it located and you know what uh, these are called as these are called as nephridia what is that these are called as nephridia these nephridias these nephridias eliminates the waste material from the body from the body and here you can see the arthropoda or green glands arthro in the arthropoda you can have an example the best example for the arthropoda is best example for the arthropoda is the cockroach what is that cockroach in these organisms the waste materials whatever the waste materials are there in their body they get excreted and they get eliminated with the presence of green glands what is that green glands and malfusion tubules 
and these are all these are the two structures which helps in the elimination of the waste materials from the body from the body let's have an example these are all the example of arthropoda this is this is uh, millipeda and uh, this is centipeda this is centipeda and crayfish and coffeeford branchials brine shrimp ostracod sand hopper crab krill mantis shrimp these are all these examples for the for the arthropoda and in these arthropoda in these arthropoda the malfusion tubules plays an important role in the elimination of the waste material so this is what an example for the arthropoda yes come to the next one and in this uh, slide you can see the molluscans what is this molluscans in the molluscans metanephridia plays an important role in the elimination of the waste material from their body and this is what uh, called as snail the snails eliminate their waste materials from their body through the help of by the help of metanephridia this metanephridia plays an important role in the elimination of the waste material from their body every organism should eliminate their waste materials from their body through a particular structure those are called as metanephridia what is that metanephridia in mollusca what is that in mollusca and come to the next one uh, yes in the echinodermata in the echinodermata the best example for the echinodermata is the starfish what is that starfish starfish is the best example for the echinodermata in the echinodermata water vascular system is a specific uh, system which plays a significant role in the elimination of the waste materials yes in the starfish in the starfish water vascular system plays an important role the water the waste can be eliminated through the help of through the help of ambulacral grooves what is that ambulacral grooves ambulacral grooves plays an important role in the elimination of the elimination of the waste material from the body and you know what in the starfish you would observe here this is what called this is what called ambulacral groove what is this this is what called ambulacral groove this particular ambulacral groove is useful for the transportation of the waste material from the body of the starfish to the outer environment fine yes come to the next one in this slide you would observe the reptiles birds mammals in the reptiles you know what this is the best example for the reptiles for the snake it is in itself an example of reptiles and birds these are the two birds and mammals means human beings in these in these all these organisms in these all organisms the waste materials gets eliminated through the presence of through the presence of kidneys what is that kidneys and what is the study that is related with the kidneys the study that is related with the kidneys is nephrology what is that nephrology and what is the study that is concerned with the urine and its constituents is called as urology what is that urology urology is the study of urine and its components and what is nephrology nephrology means the study which is related with the kidneys and come to the next one human kidney yes what is human kidney yes in the human kidney you would study about all those details of human kidney uh, there are there are one pair of kidneys are there in our body there are one pair of kidneys are there in our body the kidneys are in the shape of a bean kidneys are in the shape of a bean the length of the kidney is about 10 centimeters the width of the kidney is about 5 centimeters and the thickness of the kidney is about 4 centimeters and what is the basic structural and functional unit of the kidney is nephron nephron there are 1.5 to 3 million are uh, uh, 3 to no it is 1.5 to 3 millions of nephrons are there in each kidney how many nephrons 1.5 to 3 millions of nephrons are there in the uh, human kidney in each kidney and what uh, what is the other name of the nephron other name of the nephron is the uriniferous tubule what is that uriniferous tubules these are the name of another name of a nephron and nephrons are about 1.5 to 3 million uh, uh, in present in each kidney and also you know what these kidneys possess these kidneys possess a renal artery a renal vein what is that a renal artery and a renal vein uh, you just have a look on this this is the structure of a kidney 
this is the structure of a kidney this kidney possess this kidney possess yes this is the renal this is the renal vein what is that this is the renal vein and what is this this is renal artery what is this renal artery and what is this this is called ureter and these three are collectively called as hilum or hilus what is that hilum or hilus and the collection of the renal artery renal vein and also this particular ureter could be called as hilum what is that hilum yes there are there are a cone shaped structures are there inside the inside the cutting of a kidney and what is the name of these cone shaped structures are called as calyces what is that calyces and the outer region of the kidney is called as the outer region of the kidney is called as uh, this is cortex what is that cortex the inner region of the kidney is called as medulla the cortex is in the shape of convex such that the outer region of the kidney is convex in nature and the inner region of the kidney is in the concave in nature what is that concave in nature kidney is surrounded by the two membranes how many membranes two membranes and also the inner region of the kidney is called as medulla and outer region is called as the cortex as well as there is another thing there is a cap like structures that are present on the apex region of the kidney these are called as adrenal glands what is that adrenal glands adrenal glands and the outer region of the kidney is cortex and inner region of the kidney is medulla as well as this is the renal vein and this is a renal artery and this is the ureter where the waste materials can excreted from these and transported from these structures to the urinary bladder of our body urinary bladder of our body and this is what the structure of a kidney and this the, this particular regions are called as columns of vetini what is that columns of vetini and this particular region is called as this particular region is called as pelvis what is that pelvis and you know what a small minute structures are there on the surface of each callus is called as is called as nephrons what is that nephron these are the basic fundamental structural and functional unit of the kidney or these are also called as urinary ferrous tubules urinary ferrous tubules as i told you in the previous segment and now move on to the next one this is the nephrological disorders and what were the nephrological disorders that are related with the kidney and first of all uh, before explaining the nephrological disorder you should know the structure of a nephron and this is what the nephron of a kidney this is what the nephron of a kidney these are the structural these are the structural and structural and functional unit of kidney what is that functional unit of kidney and you know what this is the entire structure of the nephron and this is called as bowman's capsule this is called as bowman's capsule this is called as bowman's capsule and this particular bowman's capsule is supplied with the efferent arteriole what is this efferent arteriole efferent arteriole and this is efferent arteriole and this is the glomerulus what is that glomerulus and these three are called as malfusion body what is that these three are called as you may ask you the flow chart in some other examinations and like appsc as well as the tspsc in the examination you can see this particular type of questions and they may ask you uh, just arrange the structures which are given below that are related to the excretory system then you should know the order of arrangement of these particular parts this is the efferent arteriole and this is the efferent arteriole and this is the glomerulus and these three are called as malfusion body and you know what the walls of the glomerulus the walls of the woman's capsule is supplied with the small minute cells and these are called as these are called as podocytes what is that podocytes are also useful for the filtration of the water and also the blood and the structure that is nearer to the nearer to the bowman's capsule is called as proximal convoluted tubule what is that proximal convoluted tubule 
and this is the u-shaped structure you have this is called as loop of henle what is that loop of henle and loop of henle was discovered by loop of henle was discovered by the henle henle after that this particular loop of henle opens into the long coil tube this is called as dct dct means distal convoluted tubule what is this distal distal convoluted tubule and this particular distal convoluted tubule opens into long collecting tube this is called as collecting duct what is that collecting duct and hence if you know what after the enter after the entering of the water and blood there are three stages are there glomerular filtration glomerular filtration glomerular filtration and absorption absorption and reabsorption reabsorption and formation of the hypotonic urine these are the four steps which are involved in the process of nephron involved in the process of nephron yes this is what the structure of a nephron you may ask you only the flow chart in the particular exam in the recent examination this is the new trend in the examinations they may ask you like this and hence in this topic this is the nephrological disorders and what were the nephrological disorders the nephrological disorder means some other diseases that are related with the kidneys and that mainly related with the nephron and i will explain you the diseases whatever the disease that causes to the nephron or kidneys in our body and the first disease is the esrd what is that ESRD is a disease. ESRD is a disease, and this particular ESRD means end stage renal disease. What is this? End stage renal disease. And the next disease is renal failure. Renal failure. And the next one is kidney stones. What is that? kidney stones and the last one is cystitis what is this cystitis you know what this is the end stage renal disease what is end stage renal disease renal disease end stage renal disease means the kidney stops their functioning such that nephron will not work furtherly that is that is called as end stage renal disease this is also called as uremia what is that uremia it is the condition where the uric acid deposition is higher and the concentration of the uric acid and the quantity of the uric acid increases in the blood is called as uremia that is also called as ESRD or end stage renal disease. Now it is the renal failure. What is renal failure? In the renal failure you may observe the inflammation of the glomerulus. Inflammation of the glomerulus takes place in the renal failure and in the kidney stones what is kidney stones kidney stones means whenever the calcium oxalate and calcium phosphate what is that whenever the calcium oxalate calcium oxalate and calcium phosphate calcium oxalate and calcium phosphate deposits are there than the required amount then they becomes the crystals and uh, that particular crystals made uh, in turn uh, which turns into the stones those are called as kidney stones and what is cystitis cystitis means the abnormal growth of the tissue that is present on the kidneys it is called as cystitis they may ask you directly and what were the symptom of the particular disease so that you would say and you can say like this and come to the next one into the next thing dialysis what is this dialysis what is dialysis dialysis means you know what dialysis means those people who are affected with the kidney failures or who are affected with the ESRD they may they may they may have the particular procedure an artificial procedure is there that is called as dialysis and this is also called as artificial kidney what is that artificial kidney and this artificial kidney was discovered for the first time by William Kolff. What is that? Who is that? William Kolff. 
and uh, can i ask you the another question who who is the first person to transplant the kidney in the world who is the first person first person to transplant the kidney in the world he is nothing but charles hafnagel who is that charles hafnagel is a person charles hafnagel is a person who is the first person for the transplantation of the kidney and artificial kidney was discovered by william kolf and artificial kidney is also nothing but dialysis what is that dialysis this is what the dialyzer machine and this is a peritoneal dialysis this is the hemodialysis let me explain you what is peritoneal dialysis what is hemodialysis in the hemodialysis the blood is taken from the artery the blood is taken from the artery of a person and it is mixed with the heparin mixed with the heparin and in turn in turn it is it is dissolved into the and it is kept into the it is kept into the dialyzer machine what is this dialyzer machine in this machine a semi permeable membrane is there semi permeable membrane is there which separates the salts from the particular blood in the dialyzer machine and after that it is the remaining constituency is added up with some other useful chemicals which are useful for our body those gets mixed up with the particular solution whatever the solution we get after the removing of the salts that is again injected that is again processed into the veins so that these veins carries the particular blood into the heart and in turn which also which circulates the the fluids into the entire body parts and this particular dialysis has to done 2 to 3 times per week 2 to 3 times per week it should be done 2 to 3 times per week and this is called hemodialysis what is peritoneal dialysis and those people who gone under the peritoneal dialysis a peritoneal catheter a peritoneal catheter kept into the this particular region and this particular entire procedure will be worked out inside the body so that it is very costly it is also available in india also this is hemodialysis this is peritoneal dialysis these are the two types of the dialysis we have and this is what this is what the uh, renal catheters are kept to the particular veins and arteries so that uh, uh, from the arteries we can collect the deoxygenated blood from the body and also after the complete procedure it is kept again into the veins and uh, in turn which reaches to the heart from the heart it is supplied to the different parts of the body this is called as hemodialysis and come to the next one this is the structure of nephron already i had explained you this is what called bowman's capsule what is that bowman's capsule this is called efferent arteriole the smallest thing of artery is arteriole arteriole and what is this this is efferent arteriole efferent arteriole and what is this this is pct proximal convoluted tubule and what is this this is a distal convoluted tubule and this is loop of henle what is that loop of henle this is a structure then this is called collecting duct what is this this is called as collecting duct this is structure of a nephron already i had explained you and come to the last segment this is uh, abnormal constituents of urine what is abnormal constituents of urine the urine is having if you assume that urine is 100 percent is 96 percent of urine is having the water and 4 percent of the constituents is having the organic and inorganic constituents what is that organic and inorganic constituents and if these are disturbed with some other some other factors those are called as abnormal constituents in the urine abnormal constituents means those components which are unnecessary for the uh, preparation of the urine or some other extra traces that are available in the urine and uh, such uh, type of chemicals made a chemical medical conditions what were those conditions let me explain you first one is hematuria what is that hematuria and second one is ketonuria 
and third one is glycosuria glycosuria and albuminuria albuminuria and the next one is hcg what is that hcg see hematuria ketonuria glycosuria albuminuria hcg what is this hcg and in the hematuria you would see the you would see the red blood cells that are passed from the urine and in the ketonuria you would see the ketone bodies in the urine in the glycosuria you can observe in the glycosuria you can notice that glucose traces are there in the blood what is that glucose traces in the albuminuria the urine is passed along with the proteins along with the proteins in the hcg hcg means human human chorionic this is an hormone human chorionic gonado human chorionic gonadotropic hormone this is what the test it is done to the females for the confirmation of the pregnancy test this is called a hcg if it is mixed up if it is if it is if it is having the traces in the urine means it is called as hcg and these are all the medical conditions where the urine is mixed up with these components these are the abnormal constituents of the urine what is this these are the abnormal constituents of the urine and come to the next segment yes in this complete session we had we had discussed about the excretion and you know what what is excretion excretion means the elimination of the waste material from our body is called as excretion and the length of the kidney what is the length of the kidney the length of the kidney is about the 10 centimeters what is the width of the kidney it is about the half of the length so it is 5 5 centimeters and what is the thickness of the kidney the thickness of the kidney is about the 4 centimeters in the thickness and the basic what was the basic structural and functional unit of the kidney the basic structural and functional unit of the kidney is a nephron nephron is having the different parts those are bowman's capsule glomerulus and podocyte cells and proximal convoluted tubule and loop of henle and distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct these are all these part these are all the parts of a nephron these are this particular nephron is about 1.3 to 5 1.3 to 5 millions of nephrons are there in each kidney you know what the right kidney is lower than that of the left kidney due to presence of a large liver that is present on the right side of our body and kidney is in the bean shaped what is that shape bean shaped and in the uh, in the nephron you can see efferent arteriole efferent arteriole and the glomerulus is collectively called as small fusion body and pct dct and loop of henle is called as renal body what is that renal body renal body and you may ask in the examination hall uh, like uh, they may ask you the flow charts the arrangement of the flow chart the arrangement of the flow chart is very important arrangement of the kidneys or arrangement of the parts of a particular excretory system is very very important and mainly a major thing is in this lesson is this particular tabular form and this particular tabular form uh, there uh, you might be asked some a very few questions from this particular tabular form this is what the excretory system what we have in the lower organisms and also in the higher organisms if you are having any doubt means you can ask me and you can text me or you can keep a comment on the comment box so that we will rectify your doubts whatever the doubts you have otherwise you can make me a call you can make me a call to the rk academy so that we will explain you whatever the doubts you have and my dear student yes we are going to announce you one thing uh, in the upcoming days and very soon as early as possible we are going to give you all the biology and uh, some other gs content in the english medium for the first time and also exclusive in english medium for the group 2 and dsa aspirants those who are preparing for the ap tet and ts tet and c tet whatever the tets are there and ap dsc and for the uh, telangana state dsc for school assistant and sgt we are going to give you at very low price it is about the 99 rupees only so please utilize this opportunity my dear students thank you very much